So my name is Professor Bruno Lessard, and I'm the principal investigator of the Lessard Research Group. So what we do is we work on organic electronics, and so what that is is electronics that use uh, carbon-based semiconductors. And so what that means is that we can use these, these uh, carbon-based semiconductors like polymers or small molecules, and they have a lot of inherent uh, advantages over your silicon-based semiconductors that are used in conventional electronics. Um, so in our lab, we work with, um, we work on the design of new molecules by doing chemistry to modify existing dyes, for example. And we also fabricate devices in the lab. We have projects on, on photovoltaics, projects on transistors, projects uh, related to organic light emitting diodes, and sensors. A lot of our major discoveries are related to either the development of a new material um, something that's more effective. Uh, for example, we've got a project where we're developing new additives for organic photovoltaics. Uh, we've developed some additives that make them more stable um, as well as more efficient. Um, we have other projects that are related to the actual manufacturing. Uh, so developing new uh, routes to obtain more effective um, devices. Right? And so we, we, in the lab, we have uh, students that are working on chemistry as well as manufacturing and building of prototypes. We also work very closely with Canadian industry to build prototypes and, and molecules and things that uh, are important for their, their growth as well. So organic semiconductors or organic electronics made from organic semiconductors are already starting to enter the market, right? Things like cell phones, you have the display screen, which is OLED, right? And it's a lot brighter, more efficient, but also a lot thinner, so you can have a bigger battery in there. Um, and you're also starting to see OLED TVs, right? There's uh, also a, lot, a push for OLED-based lighting. If you can have lighting that's more efficient, less use of energy, um, that's also very important. Again, uh, for photovoltaics, organic photovoltaics, they can be made very thin, so therefore flexible. Because they can be processed and manufactured at lower temperatures, they can actually be manufactured with our conventional printing processes. So you could print photovoltaics you know, with inkjet printers, for example, or roll-to-roll, -roll, like you print a newspaper. right? And therefore, that would result in very inexpensive photovoltaics. And, and flexible, so the idea is you could have you know, for example, a tarp, a uh, solar tarp, or, or a roll-up solar panel that you can take with you camping. And this would make it uh, a lot more accessible to the public and just for off-grid applications to have access to inexpensive solar panels. Other things like building integrations, for, because you can make these photovoltaics semi-transparent, a lot of companies have started looking at the possibility of having either curtains that are photovoltaics or even having a coating on their skyscrapers so that you reduce the, the light coming in, which they already want to do, but also increase the, the energy to make carbon neutral buildings. Another example, these sensors, these organic electronic sensors can be used as biosensors even. So these semiconductors can be used to interact with uh, different biological systems we could envision using these sensors for doping for athletes uh, or even detecting diseases. Um, you, could have a, you could have a transistor, an inexpensive transistor that could be used as a biosensor and be used, uh, for example, detect uh, disease in like third world countries where, where access to a lab might, might be hard. 